everyone, my name is Lee Sankey and today I'm going to be sharing another exercise on timing skills. I'm going to be going through four different ideas, the things that you can integrate into your playing and I'm going to be building on my last video where I talked about this idea of push and hold. So you're going to need a C diatonic harmonica to play along. We're going to be in cross position in the key of G and if you're interested in finding out more about the, the skills and the ideas I'm going to cover in this video, then check out my course Timing Skills for Blues Harmonica. The link can be found in the description below. So let's get into the exercise itself. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a, a very simple two bar phrase and we're going to be transforming it into something which is takes it away from being sort of linear and predictable, very square to something which is much cooler, it's got a swagger to it, it's got loads, loads of scope for expression uh, and we're going to achieve that all through these phrasing ideas, timing skills ideas. <clears throat> so let me just explain what the phrase is and then we'll layer in these ideas one by one. So the phrase itself, we'll play it through once and then break it down, it's very very simple. Okay, so we're in 4-4, four, four, so we've got four beats per bar, okay, and we've got two bars, so we've got eight beats in total, and we're playing one note per beat, so as my foot hits the floor, I'm playing a note, okay, so bar one, we've got four notes, and they're draw two, draw two again, draw three, half step bend, draw three, so we've got, okay, Right? And we go to bar two, and we're going to play a C7 arpeggio here. So we've got blow one, blow two, blow three, draw three half step bend. So again, we're playing that one note per beat as our, hit, as our foot hits the floor, okay? So let's take bar one and bar two, put them together, and then we can loop round it. So let's play it twice. Okay, very simple. So what we've got here at the moment is something which is very square, very linear. All the notes are in the same place. They're all played uh, for the same duration. So let's start building in these, these timing ideas. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the timing interval between that draw three half step bend and the draw three no bend in bar one. So I'm gonna play it through in a linear way and then the second time I go through, I'm gonna change the timing of that note and see what happens. Okay, super cool. So what am I doing there? I've changed the timing of that draw three when I'm hitting it unbent. I'm hitting it on the upbeat, okay? I'm hitting it much earlier. So instead of now all the notes being um, on the beat, I've moved that draw three so it's earlier. So we've got, we can just play across bar, bar one, we've got And that subtle micro variations, fraction of a second, just transformed that phrase. And I cannot emphasize enough that those kind of intervals, the way that you play, the timing of those intervals, there is so much scope for expression and variation. Um, it, it, it's so, so important. I cannot emphasize that enough because at the end of the day, we're all playing the same notes, okay? It's, it, it's what you do with them which counts. So that's a great thing to, to practice, to go through and play it 
in a linear way and then play that draw three earlier. So what I'm doing there is instead of it playing it as my foot hits the floor, what I'm doing it is after the draw three half step bend, as my foot comes up at the top of the travel, if we think about it like an accelerator, I'm then hitting it much earlier at the top of the upbeat. Now, the reason why that also helps this phrase is because then I'm playing, because I'm playing it earlier, I'm creating a bit of space before I hit the blow one, which is the first note of bar two, okay, within the loop. And because I've, you've got that air there, you've got that more space, it creates a bit more contrast, okay? Now, the second idea we're gonna look at now is focusing on this blow one note. And what we can do here is we can introduce this idea of a push, all right? And also holding the note slightly longer. So listen to what, what that does to the phrase, okay? So I'm gonna play it through linear, and then I'm gonna push onto that, onto that one, first note of bar two. So again, it just gives it a bit more swagger, a different feel, it's less linear. The other thing that I'm doing there is I'm holding that blow note, blow one, for a fraction longer. That is to say that as my foot travels down, I play the note earlier before my, hit, my foot hits the floor, okay? So if we think about this as a, our foot being like an accelerator pedal, I talked about this in my last video, Anywhere along that travel, you can play that note. And when, you, when your foot is going in time, we're talking fractions of a second here. So you push it, but what I'm doing is I'm playing it slightly earlier, and then as my foot hits the floor, the note's already sounding. As my foot comes up, I'm continuing to hold the note. As my foot comes down, I'm continuing to hold the note, so it's a beat. And as my foot hits the floor, I then move on to the blow two, okay? Now that push, okay, works really well when you're playing that draw three half step and draw three each on the beat and then the push, it emphasizes. But you can also use it in conjunction with playing that draw three on the upbeat, okay? But the push sounds even better I think when you're playing that draw three, uh, no bend, uh, like on, on the beat, and then you can push uh, uh, the one uh, even more. And then we're, hold, we're holding it. The next thing that we can do is we can play around with the transition from the end of bar two, so this is the draw three half step bend, onto the draw two, which is the first note of starting the cycle again. So we're gonna do a push and hold here, which I covered in the last video. So what, what happens uh, to the phrase when I introduce that? It sounds like this. So now we've got something which has got a lot of swagger and a shape. It's completely transformed from the kind of linear square. Okay, super cool. And what we're doing is we're playing with where the notes are placed so they're not all square and linear and we're thinking about how long we're holding each note for. And these micro changes, subtle changes, 
are completely transformative to what you can do in your playing. It's your phrasing. So I hope that's coming across. So now we have taken something which is very, um, you know, simple and, and linear, and we've applied these three ideas to make it super cool. So have a play with that try and integrate them into your playing and get a handle on them and experiment, especially with that draw three, half step bend, draw three um, interval. That's a key one to, to have a play around with. Now, the last idea that I wanted to uh, share with you is this idea of what happens when we want to take something up a level. Now, often we think about adding more, okay? More notes, more complexity. We think about adding something when we want to give something a lift. But what happens when we take something away? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through the riff again, and I'm going to take something away. And watch what happens uh, when I do that. So what I've done there is I've dropped out the first draw two at the start of the sequence. Now, because your ear, because the listener's ear is expecting a note there because you've established that as a pattern, when I take the note away, I make that beat um, more noticeable, okay? The, the, the fact I don't play anything there, that silence makes that beat louder, it stands out, it's unexpected. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a super cool thing to do. You don't want to overuse it, but use it in the right place. It can be really powerful. So what I'm doing there is I'm dropping the first two and I'm playing the next draw two on the second beat. So the first beat of that bar, there's no note there. And I play the second draw two on the second beat, okay? It's a super cool and fun thing to do. So there's four different ideas that we've talked about in this video, um, all to do with uh, timing skills and how you can play with your phrasing, with these subtle micro variations. So if you're interested in building on those skills, finding out more, check out my course, Timing Skills for Blues Harmonica, link in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel, click uh, in the bottom right corner. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting my channel over the years. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you very much.